Hello everyone. Today I'm going to uh, uh, share the, a video with you, uh, which will involve the explanation of structure of the brain. Human brain, uh, as we all know, is a very important part of the body as it controls almost all the functions of the body. Starting up with the structure of human, before starting that, uh, we'll just discuss about a few things. The first is that brain has a very hard covering, hard protective covering present over it, which we normally call as a skull. It is known as cranium. The hard protective covering present of the brain, which protects it from any of the mechanical injuries, is known as a cranium. And the protective coverings present over the brain are known as meninges. Now, there are three meninges, I'll draw the diagram. Now, when we say that uh, structure of brain, when we see the structure of brain, it is like, it can be represented like this. Now, this brain, it has three protective coverings present over it, which are known as meninges, which I just told you, they are known as meninges. They are three in number and the sequence of these meninges in the body, it is the outermost is known as duramater, then arytenoid, and then pyrometer. These are three uh, meninges, uh, we can label it like this. The innermost is the pyrometer, the uh, middle one is the arytenoid, and the outermost is the duramater. Collectively, what we have to learn is that what is the example of the protective coverings present over the brain? The answer would be the term given to them is meninges. These meninges are three in number pyrometer, arytenoid, and duramater. Now, these three meninges, they have in between them, they have a fluid present known as cerebro spinal fluid there is a fluid which is present between all the three meninges known as cerebrospinal fluid cerebro word came from cerebrum which is a part of the brain spinal word comes from spinal cord that is the cerebrospinal fluid is also present uh, between the layers of the spinal cord now uh, the uh, various points which we have done here, I will revise once again. The, uh, the first of all, the hard protective covering outside the brain is known as cranium. The protective coverings present over the brain are known as meninges. Meninges are three in number, duramater, arytenoid and pyrometer. Between these meninges, there is a fluid known as cerebrospinal fluid. And the function of cerebrospinal fluid is to protect the brain from any kind of shock or any kind of mechanical injury. This was all regarding the overview of the structure of brain. Now we are going to discuss the structure of brain in detail. Starting up with the structure of the brain, the main classifications of brain include three. There are forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. There are three classifications of brain, forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. The name is almost itself suggesting forebrain present in front, midbrain present at the middle, hindbrain present at the back. The forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Now further they are classified under forebrain, we study olfactory lobes, cerebrum and uh, or lobes, cerebrum and the last one is diencephalon. Okay, so four brain includes three parts, olfactory lobes, cerebrum and diencephalon. Mid, mid brain has no role to play, uh, it, uh, sorry, uh, it has no parts but the, its role is to connect fore brain with hind brain, it has no bifurcations. Under hind brain we study cerebellum and medulla oblongata. This was the classification of brain, the various divisions or classifications of the brain. Forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. Forebrain has three main parts, olfactory lobes, 
cerebrum, diencephalon, midbrain has more divisions and it just connects forebrain to hindbrain. Hindbrain has three divisions, cerebellum, medulla oblongata and we also study pons veruli. Okay? Cerebellum, medulla oblongata and pons veruli. There are certain parts, now I will just uh, add this here in the video that there are certain parts here which are excluded which are not included in class 10th whether it is CBSE or ICSE but in class 11th and 12th this whole uh, part uh, all the parts are uh, uh, explained in detail okay so I'll be taking up the parts most appropriate to class 10th and to class 2 also to class 12 also now for the explanation of all these we'll be starting up with all the parts first of all i'll make the diagram so that it is easy for you to remember that wherever the parts are present now brain mainly when we study the structure of brain there are three main parts which we study uh, which we study, they are cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla. The other parts are uh, the uh, parts of the brain which are there which perform certain function but are not considered as the main parts. If I say mainly, mainly the brain is divided into only three parts, cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla oblongata. Now starting up with the first that is the olfactory lobes. Olfactory lobes are just the division. Now this first part, this is the largest part of the brain, this is known as cerebrum. This part is known as cerebellum and this is medulla oblongata and this tube that is the start of the spinal cord or also known as brain stem. Now Cerebrum, first is first I told you all factor lobe, I'll just give a brief description and the ones which are labeled here, I'll explain them in detail. First is the olfactory lobes. Olfactory term is always used for, for sense of smell. Olfactory lobes are the part of the brain which control the sense of smell. Then comes the next part that is the cerebrum. Now, cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. There are some things which are very important uh, uh, for all the three. You have to learn very carefully. The first is cerebrum, largest part of the brain and it is divided into two cerebral hemispheres. That is, there are two cerebral hemispheres which are joined together to form a large structure known as the cerebrum. And these two hemispheres, they are joined together by a center part known as corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is the structure which joins the two cerebral hemispheres. This was about the structure of cerebrum. One very important thing related to cerebrum is that it is not smooth. It is very rough in structure. It has large number of ridges and grooves in it. And it has been scientifically proven that more the amount of ridges and grooves in the cerebrum, more amount of neurons are adjusted in them. So that more amount of neurons are there, more IQ of the person. That is, we can clearly state that a person who has a more rough brain is much more intelligent as compared to a person who has a smooth brain. Now, Cerebrum, I told you about the structure. Its structure has ridges and grooves to adjust neurons in them. It has two cerebral hemispheres joined together by corpus callosum. Now about the function. The function of cerebrum is it controls. First of all, it is known as the seat of intelligence of the body. That is, it controls the intelligence quotient of a body. How much intelligent a person is, it controls logic, logic, uh, reasoning, thinking. Uh, questioning, all these things are controlled and coordinated by the cerebrum part of the brain. That is, you can say, whatever we think, whatever we plan, whatever we, uh, we sit in a cooperative exam, we have to think, we have to learn, whatever we do related to all this, related to intelligence that is controlled by cerebrum. Then, the next part, midbrain, as I have already told you, it connects forebrain to hindbrain. Next part is the hindbrain comprising up of cerebellum and medulla oblongata. Cerebellum first of all, cerebellum it's not irregular, it, is, it does not have ridges and grooves, it is smooth and its function is to maintain the body's balance. For this I just explain you with an example. Our body is bilateral, that is we can divide our body from into two halves. This half has to coordinate with the other half to perform an effort. Suppose I want to clap 
this hand this hand should coordinate so that i can clap this coordination this muscular coordination is maintained by the cerebellum so we frame the answer like this that function of cerebellum is to maintain muscular coordination in the body to maintain body's balance we can walk if we want we can stop if we want we talk properly we can see properly all these are muscles tongue has muscles eyes have muscles our legs arms our body is full of muscles all these muscles they coordinate with each other so that our body can perform properly that coordination is maintained by cerebellum so the function of cerebellum is to maintain the muscular coordination in the body for body's balance last part is medulla oblongata very 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 important part of the brain because it is also known as the cardiac and the respiratory center of the body that is it controls cardiac ward for heart that is it controls the beating of the heart plus respiratory center it controls respiration these are the two main uh, otherwise we can frame the answer like this also that medulla oblongata it controls all the involuntary actions of the body it controls almost all the inv involuntary which are not under our control all the involuntary actions of the body but two very important roles which it plays are one it controls the beating of the heart and two it controls the respiration process now the question very commonly asked as related to medulla oblongata is that if other part of the brain are ruptured the person does not die but accidentally if medulla oblongata gets damaged why a person immediately dies the answer for this is when medulla oblongata will get ruptured immediately our heart will stop functioning we will stop respiring and hence as these two are very vital activities very vital life processes they will stop as soon as they stop our body will also stop functioning this is the function of medulla oblongata okay we have discussed cerebrum cerebellum medulla oblongata then some related parts like cerebellum in uh, forebrain there are hypothalamus is there which has hypothalamus and thalamus they mainly control uh, uh, hypothalamus controls the body's temperature and all so these are certain parts of the brain which control different activities but these are the main parts in the question related to uh, in class 10th for cbs or icse whatever the questions would be related to all the three and whatever explanation has been given is more than enough for writing in the answers uh, for long, uh, uh, for the update of new videos on uh, the further topics in the next videos i will be taking up uh, the structure of eye ear and uh, about the nervous system so please do uh, subscribe the channel if you want to do more videos thank you